Hello, and thank you for joining this presentation. Today, I will be going over the state of the art in fully autonomous firefighting robots. What you will see today is an overview of Unifier's technology, where we are able to automatically and without any human intervention detect a fire, locate it in three dimensional space, and fully autonomously aim a water cannon at the fire and suppress that fire and extinguish it very rapidly. So the purpose of the presentation is to give you a general introduction to the technology and the possibilities of the technology and where the technology is heading. Um, I will give a brief introduction to Unifier and we'll address the problem that the Flame Ranger system solves. Then we'll go into a little more detail on how the system detects a fire, how it locates the position of that fire, then how we aim the robotic nozzle and how we suppress the fire. And toward the end, I'll go over some of the many applications this technology is designed um, to address. Uh, so, First thing, uh, is I'll give you a little background on Unifier. Unifier is a Swedish company established in 1969. Uh, we're located just outside of Gothenburg, Sweden. And ever since our founding, we have specialized exclusively in nozzle technologies. So we're highly specialized. Uh, that's all we do. Uh, in the last 20 years or so, we've specialized in making robotic nozzles or remote controlled water cannons as they're also known. Sometimes in, in the firefighting industry, they're, they're known also as fire monitors. We've delivered many hundreds of them around the world, um, including to very prominent customers. And our goal from the very beginning has been to offer the highest quality, most advanced uh, robotic nozzles on the market. So our monitors and their electronics are made in Sweden and Denmark from the highest quality stainless steel 316L and feature the very best design and manufacturing processes in the world. Uh, Unifier has always pushed the envelope in terms of cutting edge technology. And just over 10 years ago, this led us to develop fully automatic fire detection and suppression systems or firefighting robots, uh, as we call them as well. We're likely the first company to offer these systems on the market. And since then, we have concentrated on being the number one leader in the world for fully automatic robotic nozzle systems. And that's the subject of today's presentation. So the systems that I will be describing today are completely autonomous. So they require absolutely no human involvement and they can operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That said, it's also important to point out that a human can take control of the robotic nozzle at any time, just like with any other remote controlled uh, robotic nozzle or, or monitor on the market. So the auto automatic function here is supplemental. It's working all the time, but a human can, can take control whether or not the system has detected a fire or begun to suppress one. Uh, a key point at the beginning is that come to us for each project that you have, consult with us. Um, this presentation is not designed to make anyone an expert, there are many nuances for each project in terms of you know, what is the fire risk, uh, what is the best fire detection technology, how many systems are required, um, and so on and so forth. So the goal for you today is simply to sort of learn the basic ideas, the basic technology, and what the possibilities and capabilities are. So, Let's talk about the problem that this technology addresses. Fire grows exponentially quickly. So 
we're used to thinking in linear terms, growing from two to three to four to five to six to seven. Exponential growth is really something we're not used to getting our minds around. Uh, exponential growth is where you, you go from a small fire and it, it looks like it's developing slowly, but after a very limited amount of time, you get an explosive growth of that fire. So time is absolutely of the essence when it comes to fire in terms of both detecting that fire and then starting to suppress that fire or, or put some water or foam or other um, agent onto that fire uh, in order to, to really get to it at an early stage. If you're able to get to it at an early stage, you have a, a very good chance of fighting the fire. Every fire, or most fires anyway, start out very small. If you can get to it right away, uh, you have a great chance of, of resolving the problem. Um, what I'm going to show here uh, is just one of countless examples. Um, this is a fire that started in Bradford, England in 1985, which killed 56 persons, which is uh, very frightening. Here uh, you can see a very small fire in the background in a stadium, um, just in the bleachers behind. Now, at this stage, if you detected that fire and you had uh, a garden hose, you would most likely be able to put that fire out with a, with a, with a common garden hose or a few buckets of water. This is uh, essentially where, where the fire started. After only 30 seconds, you can see that that fire has spread and become massive. Now that's a serious fire, and that would take a lot more than a garden hose or a couple buckets of water to put out. If you had a fire brigade there on the scene, though, with, uh, with firefighting nozzles and, and plenty of water, they could put that out still fairly quickly. This is only after 30 seconds from the small first uh, fire, as you see. Now, after 60 seconds, that's just one minute, you can see the amount of smoke already generated and the problem that this is creating. 90 seconds. Look at the size of the fire. It's absolutely incredible how fast uh, these fires can grow when they have enough um, air and fuel. And after only two minutes, you can see that the entire stadium is on fire. That's why we want to get to it at the very beginning. If you can find it fast and put a bunch of water on it, you're going to be able to put it out. Um, now, in this, this, I'm going to play a very short video for you to show you the system in action. And what you're about to see is a live test of the system. This particular test was conducted by the US Navy together with Jensen Hughes. In the video that you're going to see, there is absolutely no human involvement except for lighting the fire under the pallets that you see. And the fire that they will light is uh, heptane fuel. Now, I should note that in order to extinguish heptane, you actually should use foam. And we knew that, and the test was designed specifically to use water um, because they wanted to see the behavior of the system as it continued to fight the fire. So note that the fire will not go out immediately, but it would have had foam been used. Again, it was intentionally not used. Now, uh, keep in mind, the system uh, is going to, to act completely autonomously completely without any human intervention. And it has no prior knowledge of anything. It doesn't know that there will be a fire, doesn't know when there will be a fire, doesn't know where there will be a fire. It's just doing its job as it does uh, in installations uh, in the real world. So I will commence now and I want you to count to see how long it takes for the system to have water on the fire. Here we go. There. Now the fire is being lit. Now the system has detected it, located it, and is dynamically aiming within 13 seconds of ignition. We have a high volume of water, in this case about 1,200 liters a minute, uh, roughly 500 gallons a minute, right on the fire. And here now it's in fast forward, but you can see how the system is dynamically moving with the flames. 
It's updating itself 10 times a second and fighting that fire dynamically until the fire is fully extinguished. The system also uh, sees when there is no more flame. And at that point, it automatically uh, shuts down and turns off the water and goes back into standby mode, uh, ready to react again if any new fire breaks out. Take a look at those pallets. There's no damage to them whatsoever. So again, the idea is to minimize the combined time to detect a fire and commence suppression. Now I will go into general principles on how the system works on a little bit more of a technical level. Um, first of all, the technology is uh, developed exclusively by Unifier to rapidly and autonomously detect and suppress the fire. Typically, we're able to do that within 15 seconds, and we aim a high volume of water or foam or other agent directly at and around the fire while it's still small and manageable. The system is designed for large spaces, whether that's indoors or outdoors. So anywhere where a traditional firefighting monitor, as they're known in the industry, uh, would be appropriate, this system can be mounted. So uh, again, I'll get into the types of applications toward the end, but here, here's a, an example of a hangar. This is the kind of uh, environment where you have a large open space where a monitor could operate. Um, I will mention also, Unifier has developed our own electronics and our own software. So all of the technology is proprietary to Unifier, um, in-house designs of, of our electronic boards and software and everything. And we have done this very specifically in order to maximize the technology. One can develop uh, some technologies with off-the-shelf PLCs and so on, but then they get uh, full of bulky software that just can't do the job like when you specifically manufacture it for this purpose. So how do we do this? Step one, you need to detect a fire, obviously, in some way or another. Step two, you want to locate that fire with as much precision as you can. You need to know where it is if you're going to suppress it. Next, you need to aim the robotic nozzle, water cannon, or other suppression device so that it suppresses the fire as close to the source and around it as possible. Um, you then, yeah, that suppresses it and hopefully extinguishes it as well. And you want to do all of this within seconds. And after the fire is extinguished, you want to close the valve and remain ready to reactivate if needed. So now I'll go into each of those steps separately. Uh, so step one, rapidly detect the fire. How do we detect a fire? So first, it's important to, to explain that, in essence, any fire detection technology can be used. We need um, some sort of a way to detect a fire and bring in those signals and process those signals. The selection of which type of fire detection technology will depend on the customer, um, their specific application and risk. Um, in general, the more quickly and accurately the location of the fire or the heat buildup, if we're using thermal imaging or, or, or some other technology. Um, so the more quickly and accurately can be determined, the better. And the lower the susceptibility to false alarms, the better. We don't want the system going off um, because of some false alarm that actually is not a fire uh, risk. So detection technologies that Unifier has already supplied uh, on the market uh, that are well proven are uh, flame detectors, and sp specifically FE300 flame detectors by Tyco, and also thermal imaging cameras. Other detection technologies that, uh, that Unifier is developing and, and can offer already would be standard triple IR flame detectors or, or other flame detectors, um, hybrid infrared uh, and video analytics technology 
this is something very, very interesting that Unifier is rapidly developing um, and, and, and has many advantages that uh, we'll be happy to talk to you about. We should have these systems on the market very soon. Um, Unifier can use an video analytics uh, systems, fiber optics, linear heat detection systems, and literally any other sort of method of detecting a fire. Step two we need to locate where that fire is. So how do we locate the fire? Uh, first, uh, when a fire is detected, the detectors or the detector or detectors will send signals to the PLC or programmable logic controller, um, which is essentially the, the computer. Um, and then uh, once those signals come in, then the system processes that data and sends that information out to the robotic nozzle. The location accuracy of, meaning how accurately we're able to determine where that fire is, will depend on the detectors used and the number of them and the way they are positioned. Again, another reason to consult with us so that we can explain the, the options and pros and cons of various detection technologies. In essence, however, systems can be sort of two-dimensional zones where we essentially break an area up into um, a number of sectors, and each of those sectors then um, can be addressed by the system with a pre-recorded spray pattern, or they can be three-dimensional and fully dynamic, as in the video that you saw, where the system is able to actually locate exactly the size and position in fully three-dimensional space and track that and move dynamically. Obviously that's superior uh, for, for many types of applications. Sometimes two-dimensional zone is all you need. And sometimes the detection technology will require that there can only be two two-dimensional zones. Step three, uh, we need to aim the robotic nozzle. So how do we do that? There's three ways. First, with three-dimensional systems, what we do is triangulate um, the three-dimensional size and position in the uh, PLC. And that's uh, overlaid by programmable and adjustable oscillation pattern around the center point. So we know right where the center point is, and we then have uh, programmed in a, a, through a lot of research, by the way, a, a spray pattern that will maximize the effectiveness of suppressing that fire around the center point. Now, we also, as I mentioned, one of the, the primary goals is to really suppress that fire, keeping it from spreading. So we're definitely going to aim that robotic nozzle in a way to cover the surrounding area as well so that that fire doesn't spread. And we also hone in on the fire itself. So Unifier spent a lot of time um, researching the best way to really attack that fire to keep it suppressed and to extinguish it as quickly as possible. Uh, with two-dimensional zone systems, what we do is on site, we program a, a pre-recorded spray pattern that uh, suppresses the entire zone in which the fire is located. Next, we can also have a combination of these approaches where we have a fully dynamic system, but we might have an additional or separate um, zone or zones um, that have a pre their own pre-recorded spray pattern. So systems that are currently on the market, unifier systems that are currently on the market are um, the systems with the FE300 flame detectors that I mentioned earlier. Here again, we set up two of, of these flame detectors. Each gives the system an XY coordinate. When the PLC has received signals from both independent flame detectors and verified the coordinates of that fire, the system triangulates that three-dimensional size and position of the fire and dynamically aims it. With the thermal imaging camera system, here you can see sort of a sample of, of breaking up an area within the view of the thermal imaging camera uh, into zones. 
of course, each of those zones can be defined and are defined during setup of the system. And should a fire break out, as an example here in zone three, then uh, the pre-recorded spray pattern for that zone is activated, the valve is opened, and the fire, that whole area in zone three is suppressed. Again, a human operator can take over control at any time. So another way that we can go about this is by just any standard sort of uh, flame detector, literally even a smoke detector could do the same thing. That, of course, would usually not be wise or the best choice. But the idea here is that for each zone, you have a detection technology looking at that area. And if that detector detects a fire in zone one or zone two or zone three or four, or as in this picture here, zone five, uh, detector, the detector in zone five picked up uh, a fire, detected a fire. So that triggers then a pre-recorded spray pattern to suppress that zone. Next, uh, other systems ready to deploy. Here is an example of a sort of a combination system where we have um, the area in yellow is being viewed by two FE300 flame detectors. And that whole area then will be dynamically, um, the fire will be detected and located in three dimensional space and dynamically suppressed. But there may be an instance where you have blockage from view of both detectors and in this uh, example I'm showing here, the area in blue is an example area where the view is, is blocked from both detect one or both uh, detectors. So in this case, we can supplement that area to be covered by another fi uh, flame detector or, or other detection technology, and that will act as a zone that we can suppress that separately uh, with a pre-recorded spray pattern. Next, uh, suppressing the fire. How do we do that? Well, we have many ways of suppressing that. Essentially, we, we, we do that typically with uh, Unifier's robotic nozzles. Um, we manufacture two sizes of robotic nozzles. One is a two-inch um, robotic nozzle, which has a maximum flow of 2,000 liters per minute. Um, at 10 bars or 145 PSI. Uh, it has a maximum reach of approximately 65 meters or, or 70 yards. It can rotate 360 degrees and also um, aim up 90 degrees and down 90 degrees, so 180. So that gives that's full spherical coverage. We also have a three inch version, which is our force 80 or 80 millimeter internal pipe diameter. Um, and it has maximum flow of 5,000 liters per minute at 10 bars and a reach of approximately 85 meters. So the way we suppress is, again, the PLC, once it has detected and confirmed a fire at a certain location or in a zone, it signals the valve to open, um, aim the robotic nozzle, adjust the spray angle if appropriate, if the fire is close, and then suppress with a high volume of water or foam. After the fire is extinguished and no, no fire is detected any longer, or after a certain amount of programmed time, then close the valve and return to standby mode after the fire is extinguished, ready to reactivate if any new fire is, uh, breaks out at any time, anywhere within, of course, the detection system. Um, now I'm going to just play a very short three-dimensional sort of rendering of a typical installation. Unifier makes three-dimensional sort of rent, uh, renderings of, of an installation for our customers to give an idea of what an installation would look like. This is just one, um, just to give an, an, sort of a sense of how the system looks once it's installed. Here, this is a, an example refuse pit, 50 meters by 20 meters. And here we have two systems proposed. 
That way we have uh, redundant systems. If one were not to detect a fire, but the other did, um, it will activate. Also, it's of course best if we can if we can suppress the fire from two different angles. So here's an example where we have the robotic nozzle in the middle, two detectors on the wall, and then on the opposite wall, we have a completely separate system. If there's a fire, presumably both systems will see it and both systems will react to it and suppress it from opposite angles. When a fire breaks out, of course, then the system sees that and suppresses it, as I showed in the previous video. You can find a number of other uh, example renderings on Unifier's YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Unifier AB. Uh, this is just a picture of what it might look like, uh, what it does look like in a, in a real world um, installation. Next, uh, so here I'm going to talk about the sort of suppression options. Um, in other words, what kind of robotic nozzles we can offer. Um, again, the system, the PLC could trigger anything. Um, and we have a wide variety of robotic nozzles that we can offer. So we have, as I mentioned, the Force 50 two-inch robotic nozzle. We have the Force 80 three-inch robotic nozzle. And then we have many sort of variations of those. Uh, we can offer automatic doors, swing arms, and booms to push the robotic nozzle out uh, or down or up um, or to bring it out of a wall and so on and so forth. We can also offer single axis monitors where we just oscillate from left to right within a, a specific uh, range that can be adjusted um, and so on. So we have a lot of different options. Also, the nozzle tips can vary depending on, on the budget and what's required and so on. So now I'm going to show you a very short video of a custom swing arm um, and automatic doors that we made for an incineration plant. And here you can see sort of the doors opening up and the robotic nozzles swinging out into position. This way, the, they're completely protected behind the wall that the customer wanted specifically. Um, that said, these are made of very robust stainless steel 316 and are um, actually mounted in many waste and incineration plants. Uh, around the world where they're not protected at all and are still functioning just fine. And you wouldn't believe how dirty these can get, <laughs> but they still function. Um, next, uh, here's a, a short video showing an, our boom, we call it, or it's an extending boom that allows us to um, bring, push the robotic nozzle up out of the floor and up, for example, or out of a wall to suppress downward or upward. Um, or in a ceiling, in this case, the customer has these mounted in a ceiling, and then uh, they come down out of the ceiling and um, react. So here's, here's what those look like.
So I'll also mention that, of course, these systems, I, perhaps I shouldn't say, of course, these systems can be fully networked um, and they can be controlled from anywhere in the world. And I'll get into a little bit more of that later. Um, now I wanted to spend a moment reminding you about the ability to control these uh, remotely from a remote control device. Um, Unifier offers a wide variety of control devices ranging from an industrial radio remote control to our one app um, that allows you to control the system from your phone or any Android or iOS device. Also, we of course manufacture and offer our handheld canvas joystick, which has many different features. Um, and also from a graphical user interface made for a computer that allows you to control it from anywhere in the world. Uh, now I will spend just a moment to go over some of the many applications of this technology. So waste and recycling facilities is a, a very big one um, and one that is growing very rapidly. Our sales are growing very rapidly. Also warehouses and factories, high rise buildings with combustible cladding. And I'll spend a few more minutes uh, talking about that shortly. Marine ships and yachts, aircraft hangars, helidex, oil and gas facilities, historical buildings, atriums in large buildings, concert halls and theaters, large outdoor areas, arrival halls and large indoor spaces. This can be airports or, or train stations and so on. Stadiums, tunnels, ports and jetties, and coal storage. And these are really just examples. Um, again, anywhere that's a large indoor or outdoor area that needs protection, the technology um, can be used. Now I'll, I'll spend just a moment talking about the uh, worldwide problem uh, of tall buildings that, that are covered with combustible cladding, which is essentially uh, like covering a building with gasoline. And um, most of you are familiar with the Grenfell Tower uh, disaster, but this problem actually is on tens of thousands of buildings around the world. And buildings are burning all the time, like the Grenfell Tower. Um, and only some of them get really the, the media attention. But this is a huge problem and unifiers Flame Ranger technology um, can address this problem. So here I'm going to show um, a, a very, I'll, I'll sort of fast forward through it, but, but a very frightening video showing a very recent um, fire in Milan, Italy, which took place on, on August 28th, 2021. And I'll play this and, and sort of fast forward through it, but it literally is a matter of minutes in which this entire building facade uh, burns down. So I'll go ahead now and play that. Again, if the fire had been detected right away and water put on it right away, it would have been possible to uh, to do something about it and keep it at least under control. But as is so often the case, um, and I'm just gonna drag this now and, and show how this fire progresses in a matter of minutes. You can see it just spread over the entire building. It's absolutely horrifying. By the way, you can see these giant pieces uh, falling off the building. That also creates a major fire hazard um, that, that can burn other cars or even start the next building on fire if it also has similar uh, cladding. Um, so that's the problem on buildings. Uh, again, tens of thousands of buildings around the world. Unifier developed the what we call our Flame Ranger XT system 
um, which is designed to be outfitted onto buildings where we have the detectors looking at the facade of the building. And should any fire break out, then we are able to suppress that on the spot. Um, Unifier, uh, uh, so this technology has been tested by Johnson Controls and Tyco um, together with third party testing by uh, Rice and Thomas Bell Wright in Dubai in 2018. Um, over 60 documented full scale tests were performed um, and the system actually performed amazingly well. Oops, uh, here I'm gonna show you a uh, a short video clip showing how the system works. Again, the detection technology is not limited to uh, to these flame detectors. Um, other flame de other flame detection or fire detection technologies can be used. So the boom actually, so the, the robotic nozzle is hidden on the in or on the outside of the building. And then the boom extends that water cannon out to do the suppression. Here, here you'll see uh, an actual test done with the cladding, the same cladding. I'm going to pause it for a moment. This test was designed to actually not allow the robotic nozzle to suppress the fire itself, but rather to see when the continuous fire is, is, is burning underneath this cladding, whether the system was able to suppress that. And sure enough, um, that fire raged for approximately 20 minutes. And you'll see at the end of it, how well the, the system kept it under control as opposed to what would have happened as you saw in the Milan building and the Grenfell fire. So the system continuously suppressed that fire. And that, oops, I apologize. Let me go back here. Um, at the end, you'll see here how very minimal damage was done uh, only to the very immediately surrounding um, the, the cladding right underneath or right above the fire, I should say. So these other, these other panels uh, were not even affected, not even or barely damaged at all, a little bit of smoke damage and that's all. So the system uh, is very, very interesting. I'll continue the, uh, the video here to show a couple more fires detected and put out. Here you can see a fire that's close the uh, robotic nozzle tip opens up to give a nice sort of fog pattern near it. Again, all of those uh, tests were conducted without any human intervention at all. Next, um, commissioning. As we all know in this day and age with COVID and difficulties traveling around the world, and even without such problems, the just the um, amount of time and expense involved in traveling to do commissioning, um, Unifier is able to do all of this completely remotely um, anywhere in the world uh, using the internet. So the way we are able to do this is each of the PLCs has a built-in web server so that a, a local technician can simply plug in a computer into the PLC and then with Team Viewer, give Unifier access from Sweden or anywhere else in the world so that we are then able to log in and actually interact with the PLC itself um, to do uh, to review the setup, see all the settings, determine whether there's any issue with any of the motors. We can see how much, uh, how much power each motor is drawing. That can tell us everything we need to know about. Um, the gears and so on and so forth. We can also set up the programming and uh, do all kinds of troubleshooting and technical support. And again, we can do this with the help of someone locally on site. We can do this from anywhere in the world. Uh, and of course, this is completely 
secure because we do require the assistance of someone locally to um, set up a computer and, and give us access through Team Viewer. So this provides huge advantages because we can we can assist you know during the setup and installation and do the commissioning and help with technical support anytime needed without having to travel around the world incurring precious time wasted or expenses either. Unifier has now uh, delivered as of uh, October 2021, we've delivered well over 50 systems um, worldwide um, for a, a large number of different uh, customers and installations. And we are seeing this technology now pick up very rapidly um, in terms of sales, uh, customer awareness, understanding the advantages uh, of the system to be able to, to really detect and immediately suppress a fire without any human needing to be involved. Uh, so again, uh, Unifier really is leading the way in fully automatic firefighting solutions for most applications. Um, we're able to offer a wide variety of detection and suppression technologies. And uh, we are here to answer any questions that you might have. So if you have any projects that you would like us to look at, please contact us. Um, you can find our website at unifier.com um, and you can feel free to email us at sales at unifier.com. And we look forward to hearing from you and we appreciate your time um, joining us today for this. So thank you very much. And that will be all for today.